All right, let's dive into something pretty wild, a brand new way of thinking about the very fabric of reality itself. You know all those huge, nagging questions that keep physicists up at night? Things like, where did the universe even come from? What's really going on inside a black hole? And all that undeniable weirdness in the quantum world? What if all of them, every single one, boil down to one simple, fundamental mistake? A mistake that's baked right into the very math we use to describe everything. It all started with this one question. A question that sparked this whole new theory called Dahan's looping motion. And believe it or not, it came from a simple chat between a researcher and his son. They were talking about how something can't come from nothing. And that led to this wild thought, maybe, just maybe, the number zero has no business being in our physical reality. Okay, so before we get into the solution, what are these massive problems we're even talking about? Let's do a quick flyby of where physics is at right now. Look, physics today has some, well, some gaping holes. For starters, our theory for the super big stuff, general relativity, and our theory for the super small stuff, quantum mechanics, they just don't play nice together. Then there's the Big Bang. It supposedly starts from a singularity, a point of infinite density where all our math just breaks. And black holes? They seem to just gobble up information, which breaks a fundamental rule of physics, and we still don't really know what decides the outcome of a quantum event. It's a bit of a mess. All right, so into this mess steps Duhon's looping motion, or DLM for short, and it comes at these problems with a completely different foundation for the universe. And what's so cool is this theory didn't come out of some billion-dollar lab. Nope, it's the brainchild of an independent researcher, Jonathan Duhon. And it all goes back to that simple but super powerful idea. If you can't get something from nothing, then maybe, maybe the problem is the nothing itself, the zero. So how does DLM actually work? This is where it gets really clever. It doesn't just toss out all the physics we know and love. Instead, it says we should think of it like having two different calculators. For all our normal everyday science, we use our standard physics calculator. It works great. But for the really extreme stuff, like the instant of the Big Bang, or the core of a black hole, we pull out a special no-zero calculator. And this one has one golden rule. It absolutely refuses to use the number zero. No dividing by zero, no letting anything become truly nothing. Okay, so if there's no zero, what's powering this whole shebang? The theory introduces something called the phi field. The best way to think about it is like a cosmic heartbeat. It's this single universal field that's constantly oscillating, incredibly fast. And with every single tick of this heartbeat, it creates a tiny new piece of space and pushes time forward. It's the fundamental rhythm that everything, space, time, matter, is built on. Right. So we have this cosmic heartbeat. How in the world does that fix the problem of where the universe came from? Well, this is the key difference. The standard model, our current one, slams into a wall at time zero. It has this impossible singularity where physics just dies. DLM, on the other hand, just loops. It says the universe didn't start from a single point. It reached a super, super dense, but totally finite state, and then it just bounced. It looped from a previous cycle. No hard start, no breaking the laws of physics. So instead of a big bang, this theory calls it a hydranova. And it's not some violent, chaotic explosion. It's more like a smooth, powerful swelling of that phi field. Imagine it like a cosmic foam that just rapidly expands, creating space, and then, as it cools, condensing into the first particles. Okay, that's space and time, but what about stuff? How does one single field create all the different particles we see in the universe? This is where the idea gets, well, kind of beautiful. The theory says to think of the phi field like a single violin string. That one string can vibrate in different ways to create a bunch of different notes, right? Well, the phi field is the same. It can have different stable vibrations or harmonics, and each one of those notes is a different particle. An electron is one note. A quark is another. They're all just different songs being played on the same universal instrument. And here's the kicker. This isn't just some nice story. It makes real, testable predictions. Predictions that could prove it right or wrong. For example, it predicts a very specific mass ratio for the three different kinds of neutrinos. 1 to about 3.1 to 49. If we measure the neutrino NASAs and they match this, that's huge. And it doesn't stop there. The theory also claims to solve one of the Clay Institute's million-dollar math problems by predicting the mass of a particle called a glue ball. 
Oh, and it calculates the mass of the electron from scratch, something the standard model just has to measure and plug in. All of these things are pointing towards a single, unified picture of physics. Okay, so we've covered matter and the Big Bang, but now we're going to go even deeper into what this theory says about the nature of information itself. And this is where it gets really mind-bending. In standard physics, there's this huge problem. What happens to information? Can it be destroyed? But this new framework leads to a whole new idea called Ledgerill Information Theory. The core concept is that the universe is basically a perfect, unchangeable accountant's ledger. Nothing is ever truly lost. When a particle and its antiparticle meet and annihilate, they don't just disappear into a puff of energy. The event of their cancellation gets recorded. Yeah, nothing truly disappears. Every balance leaves a trace. That's the motto. It means that the universe never forgets. Every single interaction, every event, is forever etched into the fabric of that five field. And this is the real payoff. This one idea, this cosmic ledger, seems to just elegantly solve so many of those other nagging mysteries. That black hole information paradox? Solved. The information isn't destroyed, it's just stored in the tiny oscillating core of the black hole. That spooky action at a distance with entangled particles? Not so spooky anymore. They're just sharing a single entry on the universal ledger. And the measurement problem? The fee field is constantly measuring reality, updating the ledger, and turning possibilities into facts. And once again, this isn't just philosophy. It's real science, with real tests. If black holes have these tiny, buzzing cores instead of singularities, then when they merge, they should create specific gravitational wave echoes after the main event, and that's something our detectors, like LIGO and Virgo, can actually listen for. This whole cosmic story is grounded in things we can potentially observe. So, all of this leaves us with one last, pretty profound question. If a theory like this is on the right track, it means our universe isn't just a random collection of particles and energy. It's more like a grand, unfolding story. A cosmic history book, where every single thing that ever happens is written down, and no page is ever truly erased.